In this tutorial I cover the surface modifier in 3ds Max, so let's go ahead and create a line and I'm going to go ahead and create a few lines here. So I'm going to create a cl uh, closed shape. Uh, surface works with closed shapes or open shapes. So I'll just create, uh, let's end up doing three of these. Oops. I'll make sure that's closed. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and move these. So I'm going to move these vertically. And what I want to do is create a loft between these three geometries. So we can do that by, create, by creating a kind of cage of different lines and then wrapping a surface modifier over that cage. So right now I created these as three different lines. The first thing I want to do is attach them to each other. So if I select one of my lines, doesn't matter which one, um, I can go over here and hit the attach button and then I can attach them and you want to make sure uh, actually it doesn't really matter if you attach them in order but if you do use a cross-section modifier you do want to make sure they're attached in order so that the loft happens um, in the correct direction so once you're done attaching you deselect attach and then we can open this up and one thing I noticed when I made this is I, I dragged as I made a few of these points which turned them into bezier points so I'm just going to select them all right click and make sure they're all corner points. It actually works um, on the different point types mixed in so it doesn't have to all be corner points but for this case I'm going to do that. Um, and the first thing we can look at here is using the cross-section modifier. So I'm going to do this manually but first I'll show the cross-section modifier which automatically makes that cage for you. Um, so that's really helpful on these very simple uh, cross-sections. Um, and then once you have a cross section, you can go in and add a surface modifier. And this will give you um, a basic surface. So there's the surface. Um, you can change the number of steps. So if I go down to zero, uh, you can see, and I'll just add an edit poly modifier so we can see what's happening here. Um, but you can see if I go back to my surface modifier, I'm going to turn this on so you see the end result. If I increase this, it increases the number of facets or faces within each of those patches so it, it actually adds a little bit of a curvature to it if you don't want um, as many you can just add go down to zero patch topology but it's really up to you also you can see the outside is dark which means that the surface is facing to the inside if I flip that the surface will face to the outside so it doesn't really matter for now but just kind of useful to look at alright so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this well let's go back here real quick um, one thing to notice with the cross section is that it connects from the first point to the first point to the first point and then goes around to the second point to the second point to the second point, etc. And that first point is designated by that yellow point there. So if I want to change that, if I want this one to be the first point, I can select there, go over in my vertex of object level, go over here and find the make first command. If I select that, that then becomes the first point. So you can see the cross section will line up a little bit better around there. Um, another thing to note is I have the same number of points so it's actually creating a really nice cross section but let's say on this one I have an extra point so I'll go to my vertex I'll go over here to refine I'll just add another point in there and then we'll go back we'll deselect that when we're done go back to the cross section and you can see now it's actually having to deal with that added point so it's not the same number of points with each um, curve that I'm lofting between. So what it does is it, t it goes to the, you know, if that's the seventh point and that's the eighth point, it goes to that extra point and it just connects it back one. So it does that manually and that's fine. It creates a quad here and a triangle here um, and that's totally fine. The one thing that's important here to note is that you can, whenever you have, use a surface modifier, it will only work if you have quads or triangles or quads and triangles. So if I don't have that connected and I have a shape that has one, two, three, four, five segments, that's not a quad. A quad is four segments and a triangle is three segments. It won't actually work there. So let's do the same thing here. But let's, instead of using the cross section, which is nice sometimes, but sometimes you want to actually have a little manual control over this, let's go ahead and build this manually. So I'll go to my spline subobject level of this line, and then over here on the right I'll go to create line. And this will just let me control a little more um, where those segments go and how they attach. In this case, I, the first point doesn't matter because I'm going to create that, that cage uh, around the form. So the first thing I want to do is turn on my snaps, right click, 
instead of using grid points, I'm going to go ahead and use vertices. And then I can go ahead and start creating this cage automatically. So I want that line to create, connect to that line, to connect to that line. When you're done, you just right click. And then you just kind of go around. So let's go ahead and connect these points together. Let's connect these points together. And then let's go ahead and connect these points together. And I'll connect these ones. And now I have to decide, what do I do with these kind of extra floating points here? Um, I could do what the cross section was doing. I could create a triangle there. Notice again, there's one, two, three, four, five segments. So that surface, if I had a surface on this, just to test this, you'll see that it won't actually work. So surface modifier, see, it creates an empty hole there, and that's because it can't create a surface over a five-sided um, patch. So let's go ahead and delete that. We'll have to come back in here and figure out what to do. So in this case, I really want that geometry to be part of the section. So I want to make sure I keep that. So one thing I could do is I could come in here, I could refine this and add a new point down here and another point up there if I want. Um, or I could go into the spline and now that I've added that point, maybe I'll just go in, create line, and I'll snap from that point to that point. By the way, when you're, you can right click to finish a line. So I, I just right clicked after I click. Uh, select that point. So now I got to figure out what to do here. I can either go this way and always say no when it says weld vertices. It doesn't really matter, but I just say no. Or you could go this way. And so that, you know, really depends on how you want that form to evolve. And that's why I like doing this manually as opposed to using the cross section modifier. Okay, so let's go over here, figure out what to do at this point. Uh, I think that's a really important point. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that to there. And then maybe this one's not so important. So I'll go ahead and select that one. Uh, at the vertex subobject level and delete it. And so that should work. I don't see any five-sided shapes. Oh wait, I have one more right here. Uh, so in this case, maybe I don't I don't really care so much for that fold, so I can just delete that point. And that turns that into a quad. So this is what I mean by, it, it's kind of nice to do this manually. You have a little more control over this geometry. So let's see if that worked. We'll add the surface modifier now. And everything looks good. I can flip the normals so it's facing outward. And so now this is a geometry. So now I could go in here and I could, you know, add a shell modifier to give it some thickness. Maybe I want to get a little thickness there. I could add bend modifiers. So just like any other geometry, I could start to deform and change this thing. I could add a symmetry modifier. Change the mirror. Yeah, and then since I have thickness on this, I could send this to a 3D printer. I could add a turbo smooth. It's probably not going to smooth very well because there aren't enough uh, faces on here, but we could try. Okay, not too bad. Remember, never go over three. Um, and that's how you start making geometry with the surface modifier using editable splines.